This is a quick, I guess, essay because I want to talk about Among Us and imposter selection and randomness in general. I'm pretty sure you probably know what the game is already, so let's begin. So I've basically built this Among Us simulator. You can see there are 10 players and it picks two imposters each round. I'm listing how many times each player has been the imposter, as well as their longest streak of being imposter in a row. If I run 10 games really quickly, you'll see that Purple here has been the imposter three times in a row at least once. I'm also showing the average wait time between imposter rounds, which will always boil down to five over enough games because, well, maths. And more importantly, I'm showing their longest wait time. Yellow here has had to wait 11 turns to be imposter. Uh, green has had to wait 14 because over 14 games they've been a crewmate every single time. Now, 14 games could easily be one or two nights of playing depending on your group. And I know I've definitely gone a few sessions between imposter games before. Um, I think I've played about 200 rounds now, so let's simulate that. You can see how random chance is building up so that while things do average out to be pretty fair, you get some really bad outliers. Uh, Pink here has had a streak of five imposter games in a row and 49 crewmate games in a row. Okay, that is unlikely, but when you're using randomness, of course, stuff like that can happen. In fact, I found as you reach about 500 to 1000 games, most players will have a run of 30 to 40 crewmate games in a row, at least once. And yeah, that, that's a lot. Um, now, I don't know how exactly the devs in the slot have coded their game, and I'm not saying they've done a bad job at all. I, it's a fantastic game. I don't think I could do better. I just, I like to think about the fairness in systems, and this is a good example of how relying purely on randomness can lead to detrimental effects. Being a crewmate is fun, uh, but most players want to be the imposter at least once or twice a session, and if they go 30 games without, then they might start to get frustrated and potentially even stop playing the game. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit nerdy. I've written a bit of code. The code here, uh, make ticket list, is what's generating this row of what I'm calling tickets up here. Um, there are currently 10 of them, and I'm picking two tickets at random to select my imposters, which should be roughly the same as what the game currently does. So the function make a ticket list, you feed it an array, which in this case is the list of players. It then makes a new blank array, which I guess you could think of as a tombola, and then for each player in the game, it will find the maximum number of tickets that that player can have, which is a value stored in the player's profile and is set to one by default. And then for that maximum number of tickets, or one time, it will add a ticket to the tombola. It will then spit out the resulting array and pass it onto the code that picks the imposters. We don't really need to worry about it too much, but basically it's picking one ticket out to pick the first imposter, discarding any matching tickets, and then picking the second ticket. That's basically what's going on here. Um, but what that means is that we can change how many tickets each player is allowed dynamically. For example, let's insert some code here that says uh, if the player wasn't the imposter, then add one ticket to their pool. If they were the imposter, then we're going to take all of the tickets away and leave them on one. Okay, let's just see. Okay, so what you can see right off the bat is that the players start with two tickets and then the players who were imposters last round, so purple is down to one ticket, yellow is down to one ticket. Orange and Cyan are now the imposter, so on the next round, uh, they've gone down to one ticket each, while everyone else has been gaining tickets. This is what we call a weighted table. Certain outcomes in the table have a higher chance of occurring than other outcomes. The benefit of this is that the longer you go without being the imposter, the more likely you are to become the imposter. If I run a few games, you'll see that the streak goes down to about 12 to 15 games weight on average. In fact, if I run a thousand games, then you'll see that it's very rare to go to more than like 14 games without being the imposter, which is, I would say, better than the 30 or so that we were getting before. Of course, there is a downside to this, because say you know that Lime was the imposter in the last game, they only have one chance in 41 to become the imposter in this game. 
that's not to say that they won't be. Uh, in fact, they've had a streak of three games as imposter before, but it does mean that you can metagame a bit. Because if you're trying to figure out who the imposter is, and you think it might be Lime or Red, and you don't know how long ago Red was the imposter, but you know Lime was the imposter the last round, then it's a much safer bet to vote out Red. So, uh, what can we do to combat that? Well, we don't need to take them down to one ticket. What we could do is, say, halve their number of tickets. Uh, what we're saying here is, the number of tickets is equal to their maximum tickets times 0.5, which is the same as halving, and then rounded to the nearest whole number. If I run this quickly, uh, blue and purple are the imposters. You can see that blue was the imposter recently. In, in fact, they were the imposter in the last round, that's great. Um, and purple hasn't been it in nine rounds. If we click new game, then you could see that purple's nine tickets have been cut down to five, whereas blue, who had two tickets, now has one. The overall outcome of this is that over about a thousand games or so, the waiting streak has gone up a bit. Um, it's now tending 16 to 20-ish, but so has the imposter streak. Each player has been the imposter three times in a row at least once. Of course, since we know that green is an imposter, we know they're more likely to be a crewmate in the next round, uh, but we can't be as sure of that as we were before. There's also an interesting upshot in that if a player has gone 10 to 15 rounds of only being a crewmate, then they're actually more likely to get a couple of rounds as imposter in a relatively short time than in either of the previous systems. Now, the rest of this video I'm going to be talking over gameplay because it's a little bit more abstract, but there is a lot more you can do when you bring weighted tables in. Um, okay, maybe we only give tickets to players who complete the round to the very end or give an extra ticket to anyone who finishes all their tasks, even as a ghost. You can tell players that doing those two things increases their chance of becoming imposter, meaning that they're more likely to do so even in public games where they feel it, you know, it doesn't matter as much. Um, you could also halve the player's tickets every time they quit the game while they're still alive. Just put up a warning that quitting while alive will reduce their imposter chance and you'll have much fewer players bouncing around public servers quitting when they see they're a crewmate. On top of that, you could use non-telegraphed changes to make the game feel a little bit more fair while reducing the predictability of the algorithm. Um, maybe if you get voted off really early as imposter, you lose fewer tickets, or crewmates who've been killed really early on gain an extra ticket. This may seem like rewarding bad play, but I kind of think of it more like a blue shell effect, where you compensate players for rough games where they've been waiting for ages to be the imposter but accidentally vented right at the start, or have spent the entire round in silence as a ghost. There's also an interesting quirk where new players are less likely to be imposter than seasoned ones because they only start with one ticket. Maybe you could lean into this and have a unique ticket count on each map so that you're more likely to get a few rounds of exploration. Finally, you could use this system to give players a little bit more control over when they become the imposter. A prefer crewmate button could cap the number of tickets you enter each time while still allowing you to accrue more, which would kind of let you give yourself a break if you want to explore a map or if you want someone else to have a go at imposter who you feel like they're missing out. Um, you could also have an imposter boost button that maybe takes 12 hours to reset, but it could give you an instant boost of 10 tickets so that you're more likely to get the imposter when you want it. This would be great for just jumping on over lunch or if someone's killed you and you're really itching for revenge, you can just click that button and you're more likely to get it. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I've got to talk about. I could go into this in more depth, I can probably put this code up somewhere online for you guys to grab it, it's, it's on uh, CodePen anyway. Um, other than that, there's some other stuff on this channel that you might like. I, I'm thinking of doing more game dev stuff like this, but there's also a podcast I've been releasing, or I was releasing, a few months ago. Um, there's some Invisible Ink modding, some Overwatch stuff. Yeah, just see what you like. There's really no one unifying theme to anything I'm doing here just yet. Thank you very much for listening, and good night.